little bit. Okay. Right. Obviously, didn't start long with the gray with that first possession. What did you think of how we were starting after that? Uh, the whole entire offense didn't start very well. First quarter, I think we sleepwalked. Uh, wasn't very good, but you know, credit to UConn. They give us something uh, we wasn't expecting, something completely different than they did in the past. So it took a little bit to get adjusted. Once our kids found, you know, figured out what we were, they were trying to do, and I think we adjusted well after the second quarter, after the first quarter that we got going in the second quarter. Um, but too many mistakes, too many miscommunication, uh, too many misreads, misblocks, things, things we got to get cleaned up this week, definitely. Completely different than what we did the first week. The first week was pretty clean. This, this past week was a little disappointing when it comes to that. Credit UConn, to a certain extent, you have a little bit different uh, uh, schematic uh, plan. Our kids adjusted, but we got we got to be able to play four quarters instead of two quarters. Did you find some out about your quarterback and your leader, though? I think we found out about the whole team. Uh, you went on the road, uh, got in the hole 13 nothing. Nobody panicked. Um, kids were resilient and uh, made adjustments we need to. Brandon started making plays, wide out made plays. O line did a really good job for the most part all day. Um, you know, so our, I think our guys um, did a very good job in facing your first test of adversity. Listen, every, every game there's, there's going to be some. It's going to be some adversity our guys have got to uh, encounter. And I think that was the first one I thought our guys responded well to. Coach, you want to score two touchdowns, but you don't want to have 15 yards against you after the touchdown. You've talked to the guys about not doing that again. Yeah, we talked to them this morning. Um, you know, we, t we, we expressed to our guys, listen, football's, football's hard. And you, you work hard uh, at this game for, what, 12, 13 opportunities. So we want our guys to have fun. But they got to be. You got to do it within the framework of the rules, and we told our guys: you celebrate with your teammates. You don't, you don't do it individually. Uh, you act like you've been there. I understand. You, get on the sidelines. You know, go, go, be with your team. You don't, don't draw attention to yourself. So I made that. We made Coach Smith made that point to the whole entire team. I reiterated today with our whole entire offense. Um, better not see it again. Moving forward. Well, yesterday you were watching NFL games, and literally every touchdown is celebrated with a spike or whatever, some sort of whatever. Yeah. Is that kind of maybe a bad role model? If they're watching the game, they love the game. You know, is that kind of, is it kind of mixed message for football? That well, you, uh, you, can or can't do you know, I think it definitely filters down because right. kids, guys see guys at the higher levels do that, so they try to emulate guys, whether they're playing style or celebration styles. But the reality is, it's the rules. It's the rules at our yeah. level. We got to accept that, just like everybody else has to go by those rules. So we're going to do the same thing. And I told, I told our guys. Once again, I want you to have fun, but it's selfish. It's selfish for you to get 15 yards to put us, our kicking team, or our kickoff team, or whatever, our defense in a bad position. Don't we're not going to do that no more. Right. The last one. When you scored a touchdown when you played back in the day, what'd you do? Did I, would I when, score? When, when you <laughs> scored, what'd you do? Yeah. Oh. I hand the ball to Fisher with the other uh, <laughs> 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 What'd I do? Yeah, what'd you do? Well, it's been so long, Bob. No, I probably screamed, yelled, I probably you know, I was probably excited, you know. Um, no, we was taught to hand the ball to the Fisher. And you go and you go celebrate with your teammates. That's what they're supposed to do, right? Supposed to act like I've been there before, all that type of thing, which I get that. But at the same time, there, there, there is there is a point of there's a bit of, you know, this game's hard and you want your kids to have fun and play with enthusiasm. And you gotta let it out somehow, but you let it out with your teammates. You don't draw attention to yourself. Coach, how much harder was it for you? I mean, after week one, you had Epstein and Corbin that you, you went into that game with, and now in game two, both of those guys are gone. How did that change what you had to do? Well, I mean, thank goodness that room is the, probably the deepest room uh, in our football team. So, you know, we have the luxury of being able to draw upon the next man up, per se. Um, so, whatever. Those guys had to step up and do the part. You know, I felt good going in the game with them. You know, obviously I always feel better when I have all of them at my disposal. Um, but I think our running backs, and they know we watch films. They, 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 we need to play better. We need to play better as a unit than what we did on Saturday. And they're capable of doing it. And we'll get some things cleaned up in the meantime. Glad to you, Wally. Do you think it was on the other side? Oh, I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm glad he's here. I mean, he's, I'm glad all those guys are here, but Wale just, you know, he brings such a presence. He's got such high energy. 
great, great human being, tremendous football player, and I think his best football is still ahead of him. He's just scratching the surface. Was he a nightmare during practice, during the training camp? Did you sort of see this maybe? I know you're on the offense. What do you think of that? Oh. Not for me. He was, I told him to the quarterbacks. <laughs> Head on a jersey zone. I said, well, you're not allowed to touch those guys. But if those guys had white jerseys on, then I, yeah, he'd have been a problem. Um, he just brings a certain energy to him. He's got a passion about the game and the way he plays. He plays with a hard edge mentality. And I uh, love the kid. Rob, what was your reaction to the uh, play that uh, looked like Brandon ended up improvising the jump ball to Josh and the, the touchdown? Just, uh, yeah. It looked like great athleticism. What was your reaction to it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we initially had a play, and the play call we had set up was a, was a corner route for Trayvon Sidney. And uh, Trayvon was open, but they zero blister us and had one more blister than we had. And, and Brandon did a good job of recognizing, escaping, and getting out and extended the play. Um, so it was a good job, a great job on his part. And showed great athleticism getting out, buying time. And we kind of went into scramble mode drill, and let those guys know how he's working for the most part daily. And uh, I think Brandon's got a pretty, pretty good feel for it, that the build number nine can go up the top of the ladder and climb up and go get one up high. So that's what he did. He threw it up there and let Josh go get it. It's a great play. Let's go right along with that, Coach. As far as Brandon Peters goes, you always said he was sneaky athletic, but is he maybe a little bit more athletic than you thought he would in these first two games? Mm -hmm. I told you, he's <laughs> sneaky athletic, but you know, he's, he's got some to him. You know, he, he's, he's, not, he's not an oak back, he's not an oak tree back there. He can move when he needs to. Uh, you don't get Division One basketball offers out of high school. You know, a little bit athletic, right? Those guys are all athletic, play basketball. So you know, it just kind of gives you a little bit of insight to him. Ron, what do you think it would just mean <clears throat> for this program to head into that Nebraska night game three and zero? Yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about Nebraska right now. This 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 will be the toughest team on our schedule to date uh, coming in. That's not coach talk. That's not um, playing anything. Down, this team's legit. Um, they beat Purdue last year. Uh, they've been in multiple ball games. You know, just watch the field. Turn the film on. Watch how hard they play. How sound they are fundamentally. This will be the best team we played this year. We better be ready to roll. What's the challenge of their defense? What's that? What's the challenge of their defense? Well, one, they're coached extremely well. You can tell. They're very, they're very fundamentally sound in, in their techniques and tackling. They play extremely hard. Um, and they're never really out of position. They're always in position. It's a great characteristic, great coach, in my opinion. You just won a non-capital short game for the first time. I know you weren't here, but first time in 12 years. Trying to go great off for the first time in six or eight years. Is there something knocking all those, like, I haven't done in a while type things? Yeah, I mean, right. I, you know, I haven't been here long right. enough for that, but I know there's people that have. So it's good to get to, to, to get that monkey off your back for sure. sure. And uh, I don't know how many of if it, how many of our players in our locker room it really affects because you know, they wasn't playing back then. But at the same time, I think it just gives you momentum. It gives you an extra uh, mental aspect to the game to hey, we did something that hadn't been done for 12 years in terms of out of conference uh, road games. So it's just another piece. I think the guys can, can plug you in and build momentum and confidence over. Right, we still need to overcome that 13 number hole that adversity. Where, where did that come from? Did it come from maybe where some of these guys have been the last two or three years? Well, uh, I think one, they're, 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 they're older, obviously, so that helps. They've been through a lot of they've been through a lot of battles so far. Um, two, you, you've had some success and. But it's not enough yet, but it's coming. And I think our guys are, are starting to to go along with the maturity, to go along to see that you know you're starting to make more plays than what we did in the past. They're starting to gain confidence. Um, you add a couple uh, older guys into the mix that's been there, done that kind of deal, and all of a sudden it's a little bit different mentality in your football team. And uh, once again, there was no panic uh, when we fell behind. Proud of our guys for doing that, for being very resilient. Ron, with, I mean, you said Peter, he's a great athlete, a very good passer as well. What do you see as his ceiling? What do you have in terms of his hopes, in terms of his potential? Well, I hope he can be really good. I mean, I can't tell you, I don't want to put a cap on anybody. Um, you know, 
our goal is, we talk about this all the time, if you're a quarterback in the, in, in the University of Illinois, your goal is to be the best quarterback on this football team. Once you're the best quarterback on this football team, you want to be the best quarterback in the Big Ten Conference. If you're the best quarterback in the Big Ten Conference, then you try to be the best quarterback in the nation. So there's always something to work for. There's always something to try to attain. And uh, so I'll never put a cap on a guy, but Brandon's got a lot of talent. I think he's the best football team. That's your impact in just what you can call and you can do in the passing attack. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, every, every quarterback has their strengths, right, and their weaknesses. Uh, there's certain things they may do a little bit better than others, and that's that's not a slout or cut to anybody. It's just it's reality. Uh, Brandon can throw the ball with the best of them. So he allows you to have a little bit more freedom, I think, to push the ball down the field, uh, to open up the throw game a little bit more. And, uh, the more balls he continues to complete, the more uh, I see him dissecting defenses and understanding exactly what's going on with them and uh, him breaking things down. The more comfortable I get uh, as far as what I can put on his plate. So Saturday, the second quarter, what went into him completing 10 minutes? Well, what we just said. I, mean, I think to me, he starts seeing. He starts seeing. Uh, I think what the schematics of what UConn was trying to do from a coverage standpoint. You know, he was seeing the field well. He was reading his keys well. And, uh, he was on the same page with his body. Had great protection up front for the most part. All that plays a part. I said that back a long time ago. It's never just one guy in the passing game. You got to get good protection. You have to have you know, precise route running. Quarterback's got to be on point. It's all, it all ties hand in hand. When you get all three working together, your pass attack usually starts to take off. Uh, there was a, uh, 